Okay, welcome uh, to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about a problem uh, which is quite prevalent. It's called hematuria or blood and urine. We're going to be looking at the origin and how uh, we can help patients. So hematuria has various causes. can, of course, uh, be uh, caused by different type of uh, problems, whether cancer or not cancer, and can originate from the kidney, the ureter, the bladder, or the prostate. So, uh, depending on the, the origin and the intensity, it can be called microscopic hematuria or gross hematuria. Microscopic only seen with the microscope. As we said before, uh, it can originate from any region of the urinary tract. When it's uh, microscopic, we use a small test to see it, but when it's a gross hematuria, you can see it with the naked eye. Now, like we said, it can either be caused by kidney diseases or by bladder disease, infection, sometimes tumors. Uh, these tumors can be either benign like polyps or it can even be malignant like cancer. Or uh, hematria can also be a manifestation of an enlarged prostate or BPH. So BPH is caused by enlargement of the prostate gland which is located under the bladder and has multiple functions. However, when with men, when it starts enlarging, it can cause various symptoms. Some of them are called obstructive symptoms, some of them are irritative symptoms, and hematuria is also one of the symptoms of a, in front of a large prostate. Hematuria also can be seen uh, in cancer of the prostate, unfortunately, and cancer also, and sometimes both conditions can be seen in, all, in the same patient, mixed enlargement with cancer. So this will of course give a, a lot of uh, symptoms to the patient leading him to consult usually his primary care physician or his urologist and typically when he sees the patient he will start by giving him either some medication conservative measure to try to stop the bleeding and treat the, the cause and they will also prescribe some tests to see the origin of this uh, bleeding so it can be either like uh, a cystoscopy to go see or to treat with the resection of the prostate or a resection of the tumor. Unfortunately, sometimes the, the problem is so hard that the only way to solve this bleeding is to go remove the prostate, it's called a prostatectomy. Now, fortunately, we have developed new techniques that are less invasive, and uh, this technique is not performed by interventional radiologists, it's called PAE, or prostate artery embolization. Uh, PAE is a minimally invasive procedure that improves the symptom of BPH without any side effects. It's very, very efficient uh, in stopping bleeding. So how do we do it? We can either enter from the wrist of the patient and the local anesthesia and introduce like small tiny catheters that we're going to navigate inside the blood vessels all the way down in a very, very selective fashion, all the way down to the prostate. Once we are inside the blood vessel of the prostate, we're just going to stop the bleeding and stop the blood flow to the prostate by injecting those tiny little particles or beads. So what is the effect of the embolization? Well, once you inject those little particles, the first beneficial effect is to control immediately the bleeding because simply there will be no more blood flow going in it. This is temporary, so these arteries will reopen over time. And the second beneficial, so we not only treat the symptom but the cause, this will also shrink the prostate over time, relieving the obstruction and the symptoms, and also controlling the bleeding. So here we're going to take a look uh, at the real case that we performed on a patient who has been suffering hematuria for the past two years despite multiple classical treatment including transfusion, neurological uh, treatment, urological uh, resection with green laser. Here we quickly access this blood vessel of the patient and here we are what we see on the left side of his uh, pelvis and uh, we are quickly advancing the microcatheter within the blood vessel of the patient and we found the prostatic artery as delineated here by the angiography. Once we identify we're going to progress a little bit further inside in a very very selective fashion as you can see on top what you see in the black is simply the contrast accumulating in his bladder and you can see how the big and large prostate is pushing the bladder up as well as the ureter. Now, after quickly identifying uh, the prostatic artery, here we can clearly see the 
small branch vessel going to the median lobe of the prostate, which is uh, uh, causing the obstruction of the urine. So this patient had like prominent vessels, as you can see, causing repeated bleeding. It was very hard to control using conservative measures uh, that modern medicine is using so far, uh, including installation, including urological resection, and uh, treatment of the, the bleeders. So here are the big, big vessels on your large prostate. So once we see this type of images, we will obtain what we call a cone beam CT to identify and confirm. And then we'll advance a little bit the microcatheter inside the uh, prostatic arteries and vessel in, a, in order to be very, very safe. And once we are in a good position, we're gonna start the embolization procedure by injecting the, those little particles that will only go to the prostate gland. They will not go to the surrounding organs. We make sure that to confirm that we are very, very selective, very safe. So here we have an interior view showing how these two arteries, the one from the left side and the one from the right side, communicate on this patient. And clearly you can see how big is the prostate in the center, uh, pushing on top the bladder filled with contrast that appears in black on the image. And this is an image of a con beam CT, which is an advanced imaging technique that we obtained during the procedure that shows us the contrast appearing in white on the uh, screen, which is like a sort of simulation of the embolization. It shows us exactly what will the distribution of the embolic or the bead will be, sparing the prostate, sparing the bladder and the surrounding organs. This is at the end of the embolization. You can see no more blood flow is going forward. All the contrast is refluxing. This is a sign that the procedure has to be stopped, the procedure is successful. Of course, you can imagine here, once we do that, no more blood is coming to the prostate, we immediately control the hematuria. But not only the beneficial effect will not even, not only stop here, but it will progress further to decreasing the size of the prostate. So giving a secondary bonus to the patient. So next we're gonna be looking at the MRI. We follow our patient with the MRI. So on the left hand uh, side, you see an MRI after three months. On the right hand side, uh, MRI after one year. We're gonna be looking at the effect of uh, the uh, embolization. So the first effect is that the, the prostate has shrunk so significantly uh, smaller in size. And what I'm pointing out here is like an areas of emptiness inside. It's like almost like we did a resection of the prostate without doing any surgery. So the dark up part is simply a cavity inside the prostate. It's necrotic tissue that kind of disappeared. It will take time for the body to resorb it. So here we already have obtained approximately 50% shrinkage of the prostate gland. On the right side, you see how over time, after a year, the cavity is uh, filling and healing. It's like the normal healing mechanism in the body. The overall uh, size of the prostate has shrunk. The patient is not having any more episode of hematuria. But not only that, he has spectacular improvement of his urinary symptoms. He does not wake up at night. He has like a good stream uh, as when he was like a younger man. And uh, he's extremely happy that uh, finally his hematuria that we were suffering for the past couple of years has resolved. He does not have to have this problem or think about having bleeding every time he goes to the bathroom. Thank you.